for the next uh, 50 minutes for the balance of the show here. I want to welcome San Francisco Bay Area architect Richard Gage, architects and engineers uh, founder. He's an AIA member of the American Institute of Architects and founder of Architects and Engineers 911 Truth. Now with well over 800 members calling for a new investigation into the destruction of the three World Trade Center high rises on 9-11. And uh, he is on with us today. Very honored to have him to talk about all these big TV hit pieces coming out against him. I think he did the best job on the show of all the people that were on it. Uh, and I uh, really appreciate Richard Gage coming on with us. Richard, good to have you here. Thank you, Alex. It's my honor. We're going to break here in a few minutes, but just in a nutshell, this National Geographic piece, I mean, they shot a missile into a chicken coop and said that, that a missile would have blown up the entire Pentagon. They, they just, I mean, the whole thing, I mean, as an architect and an engineer, what did you think of this? Well, it was, they were doing their job, Alex. Uh, they set up uh, a piece that was designed uh, to quell the, the truth and to not display any of the evidence, uh, really, that we had brought into the interview. So there is a whole lot to discuss here, and we, well, I'm looking forward to taking it uh, piece by piece with you, but certainly uh, it was extremely unscientific and composed of these three ridiculous uh, so-called experiments, uh, more like magic tricks uh, than anything else. Well, I mean, there's so many points, but but then they also examine our psychology, like we're mentally ill and schizophrenic. Psychology Today has a big cover story on me saying the Bilderberg doesn't exist, and, you know, I go to these hotels and cover the global elite and have full-born hallucinations. That's not going to work. They also say in the piece that the government's never changed its story, and the 9-11 and the 9-11 Commission has never changed its story. I just read quotes of seven of the ten members saying it was a complete and total fraud. Yeah, uh, and, and and that it was. Uh, that's uh, that's given. In fact, uh, in fact, Max Cleland uh, was one of them, and he resigned, citing this is a national scandal. The investigation is compromised. Yeah, that's an exact quote from the Washington Post. Well, when we come back, I'm going to try to sit back, Mr. Gage. We're going to punch your website up on screen. Go over the debunking of the thermite, the thermate, the collapse, all of it. Whatever areas as a architect and engineer who builds large buildings, and plus the other 800 members that you have of what really happened. Then we're going to play some clips of this. But as we go to break, I just want to point out that I've seen the thermite reactions that Professor Jones of uh, BYU, now retired, has done. I mean, a small cup of real thermite goes right through an engine block. NASA admits they use it for the coupler separators, not even explosive thermite, and they put 100 and something pounds on a column, and it barely even sparkles like a regular sparkle. I dare say that wasn't real thermite. Oh, interesting. Well, even if it was real thermite, um, it it uh, it needs to be contained in order to be effective. And so we know in, for instance, in 1984, uh, interestingly enough, there was thermite. There was a patent for a thermite uh, cutter charge uh, that uh, ejected molten iron uh, in just uh, thousandths of a second, making it more effective than normal cutter charges uh, with high-energy explosives like C4 and RDX. Not only that, another patented device, uh, it may, it is the shell casing of these cutter charges is consolidated thermite. It is self-consuming so that the only uh, product left behind in the residue uh, is molten metal. And you gave all that to National Geographic, and they laugh at you and Professor Jones and uh, others and just laugh and say there's no such thing as it. I mean, it's insane. There are all these patents. The Pentagon's involved. Just so happens some of the NIST investigators are world experts in explosive thermite. Hmm, working on the towers. We'll be right back. Direct to you and in your face. You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. And listen, when I say Richard Gage did the best job, I've been on national television, History Channel, PBS, for these 9-11 Truth hit pieces. They come interview you two, three, four, five, six times 
over several days, several months. It happens different ways, different times. And then they just get the one time you stumble, the one mistake you make, the one time you rub your nose, the one time you pick your face. And there's some of that in the piece, but not by Richard Cage. And Professor Jones did a good job. G. Edward Griffin did a good job. The problem is Griffin's nice, though. They go, well, uh, you know, couldn't the hypothesis that fire brought the buildings down be true? And Gage is, uh, you know, focused with them. G. Edward Griffin, not G. Edward Griffin. I always get the two mixed up. G. Ray Edward Griffin. Gri yes, David Ray Griffin. I, I got so much on my mind, folks. You'll find out Tuesday why that I'm getting everything wrong. Not G. Edward Griffin. David Ray Griffin. He's so polite when they ask him, well, couldn't it be something else? He goes, well, I guess. So they use his niceness. So they all did a pretty good job, too. There's no way to do a good job the way they edit things. Okay, Mr. Gage, uh, you and Professor Jones and Professor, uh, you know, all you guys uh, did a great job with what you were facing. Better job than I've done. You've got the floor. Break down the real science. This is pretty interesting uh, series of events. And I want to tell you how, how it worked out, Alex, because we were invited down there uh, for the first interview, and I spent one hour highlighting all of the evidence for explosive controlled demolition in this first interview, including uh, the constant acceleration of the Twin Towers at two-thirds of freefall acceleration, the improbable symmetry of the debris of distribution, the rapid onset of destruction, which is not characteristic of any collapse, uh, even though, by the way, fires never brought down a steel frame high-rise. I told them about the uh, 100 first responders reporting explosions and flashes of light at the onset of collapse. I told them about the multi-ton steel sections ejecting uh, 60 to 70 miles an hour out of the sides of the Twin Towers, 600 feet, the mid-air pulverization of 90,000 tons of concrete. Massive volumes of pyroclastic-like clouds of, uh, of uh, suspended concrete. 1,200-foot diameter distribution field symmetrically placed outside the footprint of these towers. The fact that there's no pancaked floors found at the base of either tower, just a two-story pile of rubble. And how these squibs or these... Oh, i got to stop you. I'm sorry, I lied, saying I would interrupt. National Geographic did put a press release out a week before the airing of this latest piece of disinfo, apologizing and admitting that it wasn't pancake now, that they were wrong. They have a new bogus made-up fraud. Go ahead. Yeah, that's called the column failure theory. Either way, we would expect 110 floors found at the base of either of these, maybe 50 of them. But we don't find any floors. We don't find macroscopic chunks of concrete. We don't find people. We don't find 10,000 file cabinets. All of it has been systematically pulverized and spread uh, up to 600 feet away. Uh, we have several tons of molten iron uh, with video and photographic analysis and eyewitness testimony from the first responders. I explained all of this to them, including the evidence of uh, high-tech uh, nanothermite. Very high-tech stuff, uh, which uh, Dr. Jones also went through in detail with them. Uh, we talked about uh, FEMA's um, analysis of the steel from World Trade Center 7, where they document sulfidation, oxidation, intergranular melting. Uh, all of this evidence was presented for them, not only for the Twin Towers, but for the 47-story collapse of, the, of Building 7 uh, at free-fall acceleration for at least 100 feet and the molten metal found underneath it. Uh, that was a classic implosion. It's very clear. Now, uh, well, National Geographic showed the, the collapse of Building 7, but they didn't say anything about it, nor did they give any of the evidence. So there I am being uh, quoted as, as, as talking about the evidence for controlled demolition, but they didn't play any of it. And then you have this jerk, Ken Blanchard from ProTech, saying there's no evidence. Of, of controlled demolition. It's a classic straw man. And then they get so cheap, uh, separate issue, the Pentagon, they fire a, pla a pound of plastic explosive on a missile into a fiberglass chicken coop and say if a missile would have hit the Pentagon, it would have blown the whole Pentagon up. Now, side issue, I know you're not getting into the Pentagon. It's just that it's almost like they made it ridiculous as a hit piece to make people wake up. I mean, I know that wasn't their intention, but... Uh, have you ever seen a hit piece this shoddy? 
No, no. This this is this takes the cake. Uh, I I can only imagine that uh, of the Americans that are not yet aware of the 9/11 truth, that um, I I sure hope that at least 50 percent of them seeing this will will clearly see the incredible bias. Uh, in, in the manner of presentation, the tone of voice, the declaring us uh, truthers in a condescending way, and conspiracy theorists in a condescending way. Well, they did the language of film, too. They would put truth or crooked down at the bottom to make your nameplates even look screwed up. But then the people that were debunking you, it was all done with precision. That's what Popular Mechanics, the fathers of yellow journalism that actually own part of the History Channel now, that's what they did. They'd blow up my face, make it all yellow. Then they'd show Popular Mechanics glistening stainless steel, never tell people that Popular Mechanics owns History Channel. The whole thing's an ad for their debunking book, All Lies. Go ahead.